Good morning. You're listening to Central Wisconsin's 24-hour information station, AM 1320 WFHR. It's time now for the Morning Magazine, brought to you by Comfort Air Heating, Cooling, Plumbing. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Magazine for this December 23rd, 2019. Have your host, James J. Mailoff here. I am going to be joined in part two by Doug Mahan, who is a chairman, of course, with the Wood County Board. Right now, though, we have Beth and Megan in with us, our good friends from the Southwood County Humane Society. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Hi. How are you both doing today? We're doing amazing. Mm -hmm. Doing good. Good, yeah. good. Good to hear. Very good to hear. Um, I know that we have a lot to talk about when it comes to the Humane Society, so... I want to dive right into it because I, I know there's a number of different things we wanted to get to. Uh, to, to start off with, first, uh, you, you were mentioning that uh, your, your dog room is closed right now, so we can go right into that first. Yes, um, we have decided to close dog room for at least uh, 14 days. The reason is is because we have what's called the parvovirus going around. Uh, parvovirus is a virus that attacks um, the system of the intestines of an animal and it can cause you know diarrhea, throwing up. It's highly contagious. Um, unfortunately, it can kill puppies. Um, we have been very lucky and haven't lost any. We have adult dogs that have come up positive, at least two, so we want to eradicate it immediately. And so doing that, we need to take care of the dogs that are affected and then prevent the spread, which means that it's going to be full cleaning twice a day. We have to make sure that we're eradicating the disease inside the shelter. Mm -hmm. It does take around, you know, 10 days for the incubation, incubation period. So during that time, there are no symptoms, mm -hmm. so we don't know. And these are all through unvaccinated animals. And that's the, the main thing that we want to get out to the public on this. Yes, the shelter is closed, and we are sorry for the inconvenience, but if this is an eye-opening to vaccinate your animals, because you don't know what's going to happen, especially with the holiday season. People are going to be walking in and out of your house. The dogs can slip out. They can end up at a shelter environment, and unfortunately, on the way there, they can actually step in it. They can um, bring it into the shelter, which is what happened in this case. A dog was already infected when it came in. So it's very important to vaccinate. It's a simple vaccination you can get from your veterinarian, um, and it's only once a year. And it it's a it's a matter of being exposed and not being exposed. Uh, to, to use a real scientific term here, these things suck. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's horrible. Yes. It, it, you feel bad for for the animals, especially animals. You know, it's not like they know exactly what disease they have or what's going on all the time and oh, necessarily yeah, they know something's wrong, but not right. yeah, that's all they know. And so you feel for that part of it. But I, I think you you hit on something really important there. Um, you, we can't change the fact that it's happening. One thing we can do is use this as a tool, use this for some good. And that's just spreading the word on this kind of, I don't think there's a lot of people out there that know what this is. Right. Um, I, I've worked in a handful of shelters and stuff, and even I, it took me a second to remember what that term was, or what it was that you were saying. Like, oh yeah, yeah, I've heard that before. So I think that one thing we could do right now is kind of let people know a little bit more about what that is mm -hmm. and uh, how they can even um, maybe help not, uh, they can't prevent it necessarily, but uh, one way they can help their own animals in home and stuff and, and just things we can do as, as uh, pu in public to kind of keep an eye on this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, as a society, just like with humans, um, you know, you have those diseases that are out there that you can be vaccinated for. Yeah. Animals are the same way. Uh, there has been such a wide variety of, you know, scientific proof that these vaccinations do work. Mm -hmm. um, even if it's one vaccine, uh, we just plead to the public to please, you know, vaccinate your animals. It's very important because... If your animal does get out, it can come in contact. Yeah. Uh, we're also talking about the rabies vaccination. We're talking about FELV, FIV, and cats. These are things that can actually uh, do trauma to these animals yeah. and, you know, lifelong situations. And so we want to vaccinate before they come in. We vaccinate as soon as an animal comes into the shelter. Mm -hmm. But again, it, it, you know, it takes time for those vaccinations to take effect. And if we already have an animal there that's not showing signs, but could possibly, you know, be sneezing or something like that that is not recognized, then we have um, a situation. And this situation is you can't test every dog that comes in. You can only test when they're symptomatic. Right. So, and it's when they're symptomatic is when they're shedding the virus. And so getting them moved, getting the place sterilized, disinfected with the right stuff is the most important 
making sure your animals are vaccinated and cleaning up after them, especially in a public setting. Yeah. And also don't bring puppies to play areas or, or play mm. groups until they're fully vaccinated and have their first set of shots. Mm -hmm. That's the most important because that does spread very quickly. That's a tough one too. And it, it's um, it, it's tough on, I know that how excited most people are when they first get their dog to do things like that, whether it's taking them for walks or taking them to a dog park or something mm -hmm. like that. So the, these kind of things are st things to keep in mind when you want the longevity of, a, of a, the relationship with your animal and everything. You want a, as much time as humanly possible with them and everything. So uh, you're kind of extending that by just pay, being a little patient with these things. When it comes to our, uh, our animals we already have at home, uh, you, you mentioned uh, before that they're, they're, this is the thing that made me remember what we were talking about here when we were off air is the, the, there are no symptoms. Uh, that's such a, a tricky thing to be dealing with and everything and it's tough. Um, but there are things you can do as far as like with your your, your animals that you have at home. Mm -hmm. If you have a dog and a cat situation or something like that, trying to keep them separated, those sorts of things, is, if, stuff that I remember personally. Is, is that, do you agree with that? Is that one of those things you can kind of try to do or? Oh yeah, there there are different strains of mm -hmm. part of a virus that actually can affect cats. Mm -hmm. So luckily in our shelter environment, we do have two different locations that we can separate the animals and there's no cross contamination with that. Cat stays in cat, dog stays in dog. And it's, if you're at home and doing that, yes, you want to keep them separated, not just because of the cross-contamination issue, but also to relax the dog that is sick or yeah. the cat that is sick. Yeah. They don't need that constant, you know, stress. Yeah, and they yeah. need to get better. That's the mm -hmm. main thing. Uh, unfortunately, when this does hit an, an, uh, an animal you have around 72 hours um, from the first symptom to, you know, making sure you take action and, and getting them to the vet and getting everything done. Because when it hits, it hits hard, uh, kind of like the flu. You sneeze yeah. all of a sudden the next day you can't move. It's the same exact thing. It hits and it hits hard. So you want to make sure um, once you have an animal that is you know, throwing up, has diarrhea, not eating, um, wants to just lay around, you want to get it to a vet immediately and let your vet know all the symptoms that that animal has. I think it's important not only to uh, educate people when it comes to this kind of stuff, but not, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't like scaring people either. Uh, I don't think that that really spreads information and stuff. It, it tends to get people more closed minded. So one thing I want to do is, is get to like, a, you know, the symptoms mm -hmm. that people can keep an eye out for. And uh, just, you know, know that out there that uh, you're, you're doing the best you can by listening to this kind of program, by educating yourself, finding out about this information, looking at real facts when it comes to this stuff and everything. Yeah, there, um, there is no treatment for this. Mm. Uh, or I'm sorry, there is no cure for this. Right, there right. is a treatment for it, though. Uh, we have come such a long way from, you know, even 20 years ago mm. that you there was nothing that you could do. And mm. the recovery rate now, knowing that you can, you know, take care of the symptoms that causes death, uh, you know, you have an 85% you know, success rate hmm. that they do survive from this, and, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, we have not, you know, even though our dogs, we've had, to, had two that are positive, um, we actually did have a litter that came up positive. Mm. Nobody, we, everybody has recovered hey, uh, that's perfectly. Right. So we're very happy about that. So we're gonna stop it now <laughs> yeah. and, you know, to prevent it from going any farther. But this doesn't just happen because you hear parvo, you think of puppies mm. immediately. Mm. No, this can happen to adult dogs. It can happen to um, immune compromised dogs, old older dogs and things like that. So you want to make sure that you get your animal to the vet, get them vaccinated, and just keep them out of the environment that can cause these kind of things. Um, walks are good. Wipe their paws when they come back inside. So when they lay, they're they laying there after a good walk and they start licking their paws like dogs do, so they're not you know, getting it into their mouths and their eyes and things like that. So you can just wipe their paws afterwards. Plus, you don't know what you're bringing home anyways. So <laughs> are there are there certain symptoms that we should be watching for, though? Because right now, I feel like we're kind of like we're talking about what it is, but not really what we should be looking for. It's the uh, diarrhea and the throwing that up, kind of thing. not eating. That, That's, okay. that, those are the symptoms. Because okay. uh, one of those things that I I know for me, it, this time of year, we, we I think that uh, you see your dog sneeze and you think you, you start worrying that they're sick or something like that. When oftentimes dogs will sneeze just to kind of let you know they're playing or something, little things like yes. that. It's not yeah. always a cold. But uh, I know that for me, I can tend to, it, it's not, it's my, just my fur brother and I worry about it. So, you know, I can only imagine. Um, so it's, it's good to kind of know that. And I also think that um, when people have questions, I encourage you to not only, you know, look in those, uh, you know, Google and all those things we always use, but you guys are right there and you guys love answering questions. You guys want uh, people to reach out. There's no such thing as a dumb or silly question. Absolutely. Uh, if you have any, reach out to you guys and you're there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I wanted to uh, get into the snow sculpture event because it's one of the funner things to talk about. And really, one of the funner things every year that people look forward to and everything. But I, um, <clears throat> I have you two in here, and I have a very smart, educated people in here. So I have a very, I don't mean to throw you a curveball here, but i got a tough question for you. This is one that we've been talking about, me and my dad, for a little while here and stuff. And my dad grew up with dogs, and I didn't. So I'm a little, I'm still catching up on this stuff as much as I know I'm still learning. Is there a reason why cats and dogs sleep at our feet? I have no idea. Um, there is a reason for that, uh, to be honest with you. It's actually a protection and a safety thing. That's what I thought. So okay. animals want to feel close to their owners. Mm -hmm. They want to feel close to the partners that they have. And so animals doing that, they are actually, you know, feeding off of our emotions. Mm -hmm. And so when we're sleeping, that's our calmness, and they're making sure that we're calm and they're calm. They're also protecting us from anything that can be going on. Um, I would say that I sleep with my animals, but I don't. Um, my husband is very much against, you know, animals in the bed, which is fine. So we have an extra mattress that the dogs can't jump up on, oh, but they do sleep awesome. around us. So we have got beds surrounding our bed that they sleep around, but that's just for their protection to know that they're close to us and they're watching over us and they're protecting us. I, I yeah, you feel something like that, but I had no like actual proof of it. And I, I know I could Google it and everything, but I was like, I got you guys here today. I'll just, I'd rather ask you what it is and if, stuff. If you notice um, people that have cats out there, if you're not feeling good, you're actually going to get your cat to come towards you a lot more. Your dog is going to come towards you a lot more. And that's because they're trying to make you feel comfortable and they know that you're not feeling good. And so cats will actually lay on you to, to get you to have a fever and to get warm mm. because they know that you're cold. So these are amazing. I mean, they should be in the medical field. I mean, talk right? about a cat scan. I mean, there yeah. you go. You got it right there. <laughs> well played. So, nice. That was good. Oh, that was perfect. I love it. Um, it, it they're amazing animals. They're they absolutely really are. amazing animals. It only adds to the, the what they do. They really enhance your life. I mean, I, it, you know, teach their own, and not everybody is an animal person, and that's completely cool. But if when you are, you really get the, you really, you know, you you see why people are, mm -hmm. you feel that kind of thing, and that is such a, an interesting thing. I knew I couldn't throw you guys a curveball. I knew one of you guys had hit that out of the park. Nicely <laughs> done, Beth. Um, one of the things that uh, we wanted to get to, of course, like I said, was the snow sculpture event. Let's dive right into it and tell people about this. Yeah, we this is a fun about one. This. Yeah, it's a fun one. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, actually going to be February 8th, so it's the weekend after the Super Bowl, um, and it's going to be from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Bullseye Golf Club. So, change of venue. It's really beautiful. It's going to be on the water. Um, we're going to definitely have those snow sculptures if, you know, it snows. Mm. Hopefully, <laughs> the rate it's going, it's actually pretty warm today, mm -hmm. um, but we're having the snow sculptures. We're having that soup. We're gonna be having a bunch of fun. It's gonna have. We're gonna have a lot more family fun activities. Mm -hmm. Maybe a photo booth, um, live music, all that jazz. It's gonna be an exciting day. You know, yeah, and it really if the snow sculptures, though, we could always make sandcastles. We could. I mean, we could do that too. That's I mean, true. we. <laughs> that is true. We it is that, a whole it bunch is of bullseye. Yeah. So there's so. sand traps. Um, <laughs> uh, what brought it over to bullseye? Because I think that's a great idea. Uh, nothing against nothing against the old location. I think that's a really cool idea. Though it's a nice spot to have it. Um, so the Centralia Center, we usually have it there. Um, it was currently being ripped up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. So um, there, there's just not enough space in mm -hmm. the parking lot. Um, and there's a building where we used to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's that got yeah. in the way. Yeah. So just not enough space, mm -hmm. and um, luckily Bullseye kind of stepped up, and they're actually donating their venue to us. So this oh. is like actually pretty amazing. Just yeah. In general, they're they're very generous. So. Yeah, they've, they've always been good people over there, and a big shout out to them for that. Cause that is, I mean, I didn't know that. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, and I think actually, again, nothing against the old location or anything. It was a nice spot, but this might be a better sitting uh, fitting situation for you, especially if we get some snow. Mm -hmm. um, for people that want to like participate, they want to know more about the snow sculpture event. What can we tell them real quickly about it? Yeah, so if you want to come, definitely February 8th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Bullseye Golf Club. Um, it's going to be an all-day thing pretty much, like I said, 10 to 3. Um, if you are interested in volunteering, you can always reach out to the shelter. Just call our number or email our email. Um, yeah, and if you if you want to donate like some raffle items, you can always send it to the shelter. We can always use them, anything along those lines. Um, what about um, people that want to participate in the event? Oh, yeah, the building the snow sculpture. Yeah. I completely forgot. <laughs> um, no, so if they want to register, they just have to um, fill out our team registration sheet. We're going to actually be posting that on the website pretty soon. It's on our Facebook page as well. Um, so they just got to fill out that sheet. It's only $15 for everyone whole group um, and then you get a spot and then you drop off the check at the shelter yeah, you so. can get like a, a group of people friends family whatever yeah. and 
get a name together and it'll be fun. It's yeah. it's a fun one, and and you guys do this event every year for a great uh, great reasons, of course, too, and stuff. And um, it's it's certainly to help raise money and help you guys keep doing the great work that you're doing for our area and everything. Uh, but it, when it came to the the coming up with this event, how did it come about and everything? I know the history of it, but in case anybody out there isn't really familiar with it and stuff, how did this kind of begin? I believe that this was an idea by a previous um, executive director. That's what um, I thought. I believe it was Phil Hartley. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, and I was actually there for the first one. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so it was really exciting. I mean, it was an idea that came out of his head, and it just kind of grew from there. And then years later, we did the, the soup, and then after that, it was the merchandise, and it just it kind of kept snowballing so um thank you phil i know you're listening right now uh that he did an amazing job at starting this and doing it for the benefits of the animals and that's that's how it started it's one idea that can lead to you know years of just fun one of the things that you you, you mentioned there was the the donating and the, and the volunteering we always want to encourage people to uh, be able to do those things if they have the time and availability and even during a week like this where um it, People are in and out of town and those sorts of things that there's still, you know, a need for that. Uh, those dogs don't take vacation. Uh, you know, the animals don't, and it's, you know, especially with everything you have going on over there right now. Mm-hmm. You always use uh, an extra hand or two. Uh, how can people reach out if they want to volunteer or they want to donate? Yeah, so on our website specifically, we have a donate button and we also have a volunteer button. Um, the volunteer button takes you right to our volunteer application. You get to kind of pick what you kind of want to do. Um, and then you get that, we get the application and then I'm the one that reaches out. And then we set up a time for you to come in and train a little bit, get used to the shelter, take a little tour and then kind of get right into it. Mm-hmm. Um, donating is the same thing. We have different tiers of donating. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to kind of explain like the different tiers? Or? There's many things. We do have, you know, memorial donations. If you would like to honor an animal that has passed away or a person that has passed away, we've got kennels, um, which you could do a sponsorship for a kennel and that will last for the full year. And that actually helps us with the upkeep. If we have a hole mm-hmm. in our kennel, it, it actually caught, you know, helps us yeah. cover that cost to repair it. And uh, we have um, multiple things that you can do. We have our, our kennel signs that you can put on the cat room and dog room side. We have outside kennels that you can put your name on. So there's multiple ways to donate, um, along with looking at our items on our website at www.swchs.com. Uh, and you can actually donate those items to us. And we do change that list once in a while. So, uh, just to keep things updated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys got great merch, by the way. I, I meant to mention that right away. <laughs> I, I love the clothes you have over there. I don't know who's doing all that stuff. You guys are doing a great job with that. Um, what, uh, there's two things I wanted to mention. One, um, is there anything you guys uh, could use a hand needs right now as far as food or litter or that kind of thing that you guys are a little bit lower on than others? or? Yes, we are actually in need of grain-free dog food. Um, grain-free unfortunately, dog food. it's something that you don't think about in shelter environments, right. but because when, if an animal comes in and we don't know what its um, needs are, we do look at their coat. If they've got short hair, Um, and we're seeing a lot of dander on it, we immediately put them on grain-free because Mm. dogs nowadays are very allergic to grain and gluten. So, and it's something that has to be monitored. Um, Mm. We've seen huge improvements in changing that to the grain-free, and we like it. Um, We do have some cats that are on grain-free that actually helps with their intestinal system, and it's actually more sensitive in their stomachs, so they don't get upset with a change of diet. This is one of the reasons I love having you and Beth. I always learn something from you. That's (laughs) that's really interesting. I didn't realize that, huh? when it comes to a broader perspective now, uh, it's not just uh, with the shelter, of course, but with just animals in general, when we have our, our, our pets inside and every, this time of year, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I think is common knowledge for most people with their animals and them being outside and everything. But just for those that may not know or new pet owners or anything like that, what are some things to keep in mind uh, during the, the uh, Mother Nature's uh, toughest months here that we have in the Midwest? Because we all we all know we're not going to have days like this for a very long. Uh, right. These 40 degree weather days out here. It's where the dogs are probably just loving it right now outside. It's a, a perfect weather for them. Yeah. Um, they're the ones that can uh, get out there, of course. But you know, you know, cats, dogs, all these animals, um, they, they, they enjoy the snow. They enjoy playing outside and everything. But it sometimes is up to us to be a little bit more of the, the, the parent and kind of like, hey, nope, nope, you, you, you got to come back in. It's getting a little too bad out there or right. something like that. There's little things that um, we can do or we can keep an eye on and stuff. Just, again, give a broad perspective on some of that. But You're going to want to know your dog's limit. 
Yes. So um, as soon as your dog is outside and he's playing and everything, if you if you see them starting to lift up their paws, get them inside immediately. That means that their pads are getting too cold and they can get frostbite on their pads. Cats can actually get frostbite on their ears if they're left out too long. Mm. We do recommend highly to keep your cats indoors during this time of year. I know that's really hard, but trust me, once the cat hits that snow, they're going to come back inside anyways. Uh, but there are outside cats. Make sure that they've got cover, um, heated area. You know, you can build a... Um, a cat habitat for them. It's one of the cooler things I've seen in the last like five years, I think. You can use old coolers, you can use, um, you know, uh, totes and, you know, as they're covered and you can insulate them as long as they have hay in there. Um, you can use outside water sources that um, have electrical cords that, that actually heat the water to keep them hydrated uh, and, you know, keep them safe during the winter time. But there's also, you know, things of feral cats that like to go into warm places number one place during this time of year are cars yeah. so as soon as you turn off your engine you walk inside the door that cat's like oh i feel heat mm -hmm. and they're going straight for it and they can get in that we get more cats in uh, this time of year that are stuck in engines mm -hmm. um, in the wheel of the cars and things like that to keep warm so as you're walking out pound on your hood usually that gets them out um, and you can go on your way and also of course we talked about wiping the dog's paws um, people like to salt and when you know there are some things out there that can can hurt the pads of dogs so we recommend mm. wiping their paws down um, I have got you know something in front of my house that they just dip their paws in and then they can come inside and um, mm. that way they're getting all of it off because if they do lick it it can it can actually cause them to get sick what kind of thing do you have there uh, if you don't mind me asking uh, for their for their paws or um, I've got a special mat that mm. I have that actually will wipe uh -huh. them and nice. you know I do go down and I kind of yeah know, yeah you know teach him how to do it one of the dogs did it and I, I don't think he actually did it because I taught him that I think he just did it because he had something in his pads <laughs> yeah. but you know they there's multiple things out there that you could look online or you can go to um, Petco or, or Walmart and stuff to help out with those things um, we're speaking with Beth and Megan from the South County Humane Society got about a minute or two left here and I when you you touched on about strays um, I think most of us we see a stray animal we want to help we want to do something right away for that animal and everything uh, we oftentimes can't catch the animal or those sorts of things so there's that kind of gray area there I know but if there is a stray and usually it's a cat um, uh, but uh, any kind of animal that's stray coming to you or coming to your house or something like that what are a couple of little things we can do and and uh, do you, are you guys you know certainly there to, to take in these animals and everything but what can we do in the medium but in between that time um, this is one of my favorite topics mm to be honest with you, because, you know, even this time of year, we are full with stray cats. And what people don't understand is there are so many people and there's so many cats that like to be indoor, outdoor. If you come across a cat that is completely healthy, then it probably belongs to somebody. Somebody's feeding it. And if you are that concerned about it, you can definitely take a picture and put it on Facebook or you can send it to us and we can post it if somebody is missing it. But a majority of the time that cats come into the shelter, owners will come and say, it's an indoor outdoor cat, I don't know why. Well, we do recommend putting collars on cats, uh, microchipping your cat so we can get it home to you. But when it comes to the strays, please don't feed them. Because as soon as you feed them, it's like, ooh, buffet. Yeah. You know, it's like walking walking down the street, and all mm. of a sudden somebody's handing out free hot dogs, and that's your favorite mm. thing in the world. You're right. going to keep going back there to get mm. the free hot dogs. Cats are the same way. And it's probably different than what they're eating at home, and they love it. So yeah. please do not feed them. If you are missing your cat, put a fresh piece of clothing outside along with its litter box. Mm. Uh, so if your cat does get out, that's what you want to do. Do so that way the scent can come back in, including dogs. If you have a dog that goes out, wear a fresh piece of clothing. We recommend what you slept in that night hmm. because your scent is more high off of that, and the scent can travel for up to three miles. <laughs> and guess what? Dogs travel up to three miles because that's where their scent is. Ah. So you want to put your scent out there for the dog to find its way back if it does get lost. Hmm. That is so helpful. I, that, that is, I, I wish I would have asked earlier. I didn't give any more time. Actually, I'm going to tell Doug we're going to be a little bit. Uh, we're going to extend into his time a little bit because it's such an important topic, and it's one of those ones that everybody are in this, especially in rural areas like this, everybody has experienced some kind of version of that, whether it's a dog or a cat or some kind of lost animal or just you know stray animal. Yeah, well, even I had my dog jump the fence, Oh yeah. So, which I wasn't expecting, and she was brand new to the area. She was a heartworm positive dog that we were in treatment for, and she took off, and even though we searched for her she did not come home mm. and we spent about four hours with that and then we put her blanket out we put my clothing out and we put some food out there and we sat on the
on the, the couch and I was crying hysterically and I looked up and I thought I was just seeing a vision of her. No, it was her at the back door. She jumped <laughs> the fence and wanted to come back because she smelt her location <laughs> and she's she was from texas so she didn't know anything oh, wow. yeah. so it's vital you know put those things outside let them know that you are looking for them put it on facebook notify us immediately so if the animal does come in that we can actually get them back to you as soon as possible even if it's an indoor outdoor cat if it's been gone for a couple of days but also know that the shelter has limits we have what's called capacity for care and that is how many kennels we have and how many employees we have to take care of a certain amount of animals and and the more animals you get in, the more you're at risk for cross-contamination and illness, yeah. which is unfortunately what happened with this parvovirus, is that we were at full capacity and we were still taking in strays. Mm -hmm. And so there is a, a limit that we can, we have to say, you know, you have to help, the community has to help us out. Post those photos. If you see an animal posted, if the animal does look sick or injured, please contact us immediately. We will take them in immediately to get at the medical care it needs. Yeah, well said. And uh, my parents' old dog, Zeppelin, the only way we could catch him when he would run away is by petting another dog and he'd get jealous and come to us. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. That, that was the only way we could catch that oh, dog. Oh, don't chase him no. because they think no. it's a game. Yep. What you want to do is you want to lie down and you want to whine like you're hurt. Huh. So as soon as you do that, the dog's going to come up to see if you're okay. That's great. So, yeah, do not chase. Thank you both so much for being with us. I know how busy of a time of year this is and everything that you have going on over there. Um, so, you know, keep us in mind. If we can do anything, let us know. And uh, you guys keep doing the great work that you're doing. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks. Very happy holidays to you and yours, and we'll talk to you next year probably.